Hey lovelies, thanks for stopping by for another makeup play date. I am very excited to sit down, throw on some makeup, and chat with all of you. Today, the main focus of this is really so that I could try out the new Flower Beauty blushes. If you are not new to my channel, you will know how much I really rave on and on about the blush bombs from Flower. And in my last Splurge Stalker save, I saw that they were launching these and I was like, I'm sorry, what? A new blush? A new liquid blush from Flower and I didn't know about it. So after that video, I immediately went onto Ulta and grabbed a couple of the shades. Uh, I do have two of them here. I will swatch them. We are going to apply at least one of these, if not maybe both, and I will compare them to the original Flower Blush Bombs if you love those as much as I do. Now, the other thing that I thought that we could play with today is my new Viseart Violette Vespertine palette. I did get this in my Beautylish Lucky Bag. I thought we could also try the Surratt lipstick that's laying around here somewhere in the chaos. And I just thought we could chit chat. I did pick up a couple other things when I grabbed these because it's Ulta, that's what happens. So I'll just share those little things with you as well. All in all, a random smattering of things, which is usually how these makeup play dates go. But if we haven't met before, my name is Kelly and I'm a professional hair and makeup artist. And here on my channel, I strive to keep beauty real. Real honest, real relatable, and real fun. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, don't forget to click subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Okay, we are gonna dive right in. Uh, I can't decide if I want to do my eyes or just finish up with the face. I did go ahead and throw on a couple things. Actually, what I went through with for complexion is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation. I actually really love this foundation. Now, I will say that I used probably one part of the foundation to two parts of this Smashbox primerizer that I'm just trying to get through. You could really use, you know, any facial lotion that you have or even like a glowy serum. I really think that this foundation has a good medium to full coverage and I just really wanted something fairly sheer, especially right now. Uh, I just had a facial done and like last week and I'm still just kind of like <laughs> recovering from that. So I had some microdermabrasion and I just felt like my skin was just a bit textured after that. It's finally getting better, but it is also incredibly dry and I just wanted all of the hydration and just a good sheer tint. So that's what I did for this. But even in full concentration, this is a beautiful foundation. It has a beautiful like velvety, well, I don't wanna say velvet because a lot of people think of that as matte. I guess I would say a luminous skin finish. It's not dewy. It just has that nice like, I drank a lot of water and went running kind of <laughs> vibe. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna stop talking about that one. Okay, so that's what I put on. I also went through with my House Labs Triclone Concealer. You know, you gotta use what you love and what you're obsessed with at the moment. And then I actually saw this teeny tiny little Laura Mercier uh, translucent setting powder. And I was like, I know this was all the rage back in the day. I think I got this as a recent like freebie from Ulta and I just set my concealer with that. So I'm gonna be curious I'm gonna be curious how I feel about this one. I mean, I feel like if you've been in the YouTube sphere for as long as I have been, you've seen a lot of people use this, but I feel like Laura Mercier as a brand has really kind of had a resurgence in the last like year and a half. So I thought I would give this one a go and decide if it's worthy of being in my travel kit. You know, like if I am traveling for myself and I want to have things in my makeup bag Usually I want them to be rockstar products that I know that work really well. So I didn't want to take a chance on this. <laughs> I figured I would take a chance with all of you. Okay, so why don't we just go ahead and finish up the skin um, just because I really am curious to try these flower blush bombs and maybe you are curious to see them as well. I did also, by the way, go through and just did a little bit of like soft, soft contour. I went through with this little guy in my cream tint pro stash here. This is my little, uh, what I'm gonna call it, my winter curated, oh yeah, this is the light medium. You know what I should have done? Because I feel like the uh, Flower Beauty foundation is just a little bit dark for me right now. I should have put in some of the white adjuster. Oh well, too late now. <laughs> it's fine. I'm wearing a sweatshirt, no one, no one needs to know. All right, so the two shades that I got in the new uh, Ultra Light Liquid Blush are the shades Peachy and Toasty. So I thought that I would grab Peachy. Now, I cannot remember if it looks like what it does in the tube. I think I was trying to grab something that I didn't have a lot of. If you saw, it just went up this week. Uh, I did a cream blush declutter and I'm like, I have so many, <laughs> I have so many, but I was just so 
curious about this formula. So let me go grab a couple blush bombs so we can do some swatch comparisons. Okay, I grabbed a couple shades, but can I just say, I went onto the Flower Beauty website to sort of get a little bit of a description of these products. And I remember the reason I shopped from Ulta as opposed to the brand site is the brand site does not have these. They don't have the new things from the brand because they had a couple like double-ended liners and a few other things and it isn't there. On the site, it says something at the top of the page, like we're working on something new. In the meantime, use the store locator to shop in store. And then they were saying like, you could go to cvs.com or ulta.com to shop. I don't, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means, but I wanted to give you the details on these blushes. So on Ulta, they are $14.50. Now when I purchased, I think they were like buy one, get one half off or buy one, get one, maybe they were 20% off, I don't even know. So on the Ulta website, they describe these as an easy to apply gel-based tint. They say it gives a natural pinched cheeks look, cruelty-free and vegan, and it has the built-in sponge applicator. So I think that these are, you know, sort of in that like Charlotte Tilbury type packaging. Okay, so let's grab Peachy here. Yeah, so it's got that like sponge tip applicator. Uh, anyone else really bad about remembering to uh, close the tip after you're done. Oh, this packaging is very um, deceiving. We've got an actual peach. Obviously this packaging looks more like pink, dusty pink, but we have the peach and then we have the toasty shade. So I'll probably have to grab a couple other shades in the blush bomb. Shouldn't be a problem since I have like four or five of the shades. Ooh, this toasty shade is gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. <laughs> okay, hold on just a second. So we're gonna pull out Nectar to compare to the peachy shade. These are not gonna be similar, which is probably a good thing, right? You know, I don't want them to be dupes of each other because what's the point then? And we'll put pinched above the toasty shade. I really hope that these aren't meant to replace the blush bombs, but I feel like the blush bombs are pretty popular. So this is a very messy swatch. So here we have the new peachy and toasty shades in the ultra light formula. And then over here we have the blush bombs in, let's see, we have nectar on the top and pinched on the bottom. Okay, I don't know if you can tell, but that toasty shade is, it's a very warm, it's like a brownie orange shade. Not quite the vibe for today, not quite the vibe for today. So I don't know, maybe if I, maybe if I tap these out, I'm gonna do this on my hand here. Oh, that peachy shade, I feel like it kind of like, um, stained maybe a little bit, which kind of makes sense with a gel formula. And I'm just gonna blend out the other blush bombs as well. Yeah, I can definitely see, I don't know if you'll be able to tell on my hand here, but I can definitely see that the new ultralight version is more of that like gel where it almost like blends into the skin, sort of gets that like, yeah, just like that really lightweight feel. Whereas the blush bomb and not necessarily in a bad, not in a negative way. I wanted to say like it sort of sits on the skin, but I don't mean like in an icky way. It just doesn't quite like smush in quite as much. Now, the only problem is I could see something that's a little bit more wet like this one, possibly picking up coverage if you are someone who likes to wear higher coverage makeup. But that's just, you know, that's just speculation here. That's just speculation. So. The only way to tell is to go ahead and pop it on. So we're gonna go ahead and use this peachy shade. I am going to probably like dot it on from the applicator, but then blend it in. Uh, let's go ahead and use the BK Beauty 109, just because I know that I do like to use that with uh, cream products. And so, you know, using a brush that I know that I like is gonna be the best way to really give this a good shot. So I bet I already, I was just talking about like not turning off that clicking mechanism, this one. I bet I didn't do it in the other shade. <laughs> I'll go back in a minute. Okay, so I'm just going to pop a little bit of this on because I don't know how pigmented this is going to be, but I think that they're, you know, they're sheer in a good way, but not like nothing. I've had some gels before where it's like, uh, are you doing anything? 
Oh yeah, I forgot to turn my light back up. I turned it down so that you could see a better like view of the swatches and I'll zoom you in. Is this my first YouTube video? <laughs> okay, there we go. So that is one, you know, fairly light layer. And I'm gonna do the same on this side and we will see how this can build. This is a pretty shade. Do I have something like this in my collection? Probably. Already, I'm really liking the thin texture of this. And while it's like thin and sheer, it's not uber emollient. So if you don't love something that gets like really glossy sheeny, you know, I'm thinking about like the Cream Tint Pros from Salt New York, this might be for you. So I would think that perhaps our oily skinned makeup friends could wear this as well. All right, I'm gonna give this just a moment to set into the skin and we're gonna see how popping another layer on top works. All right, I've given that about a minute. I'm just going to add a little bit more here. Okay, yeah, this color can pack a punch. I feel like we were able to build quite a bit. Got a little intense on this side. <laughs> I mean, I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it, it's just, I don't know that the bright peachy pinky uh, cheek is gonna really go with our like smoky violets that we have in the Viseart palette. That's really pretty. Can you see it's, you know, it has like a nice skin finish, a little bit luminous, but not overly glowy dewy. I do feel like the blush bombs, to me, those have like a little bit of a sheen to them, not like a glitter, but they have that like juicy feel to them. These are definitely thinner. I think that these are really pretty. I mean, you know that I like the blush bombs. These, to me, blended out just as easily. They're very pigmented, just like the blush bombs are. Super pretty. I will, uh, let's see, Jeremy and I have a movie night tonight, so it's 2.20 right now, so I should be able to give this a good stretch of wear time today. I don't know if I'll be able to show you, but I will at least either note it at the end of the video or in the comments. So now I'm trying to decide if I want to set this a smidge. I mean, if it was a day where I'm going to work and if I have my hair down, I usually tend to just set a little bit just so that it's a little bit protected from my hair. I think we might do that. I do think, however, I'm gonna go through with my hourglass veil just because I do love this one and it's super lightweight. So I'm just very quickly gonna go through with my BK103 and honestly just pop this over the top. And I have almost nothing in here. Can you see that? And I'm just going to like dab and not swipe so that I'm not like moving that. Still has some luminosity. It did take down that glow a little bit, but I'm sure it'll be back. It'll be back. I really, I really like that. I think it's a beautiful, just like very natural flush. This toasty shade, y'all, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. If I wear this, it's going to be towards the summer because it's like, it just had that like orangey vibe. You know, I in that blush declutter, I decluttered the Natasha Denona liquid blush in the one shade that's almost like a caramel nude. And I was like, I just don't think I'm gonna wear this. And this is like that, but deeper. So I might see if I can maybe exchange shades or something. Cause this, I don't know. I don't know about this one. Okay. So before we get into using the Viseart palette, I just wanted to talk about a couple other things. I wanted to share what else I got in my Ulta order because you know how we do, we go on for like one or two things and then you end up filling your cart. So when I ordered those blushes, Ulta was doing like a fragrance sale and you all know, you all know that I am on a like no buy for perfumes right now, but that doesn't mean home fragrance. And here's the thing, I am I'm up to my elbows in candles here at the house. I do not need any candles, but I still, I still like things to smell nice even when I can't really light a candle. Like when I'm in this room, especially if I'm doing a long day of filming, it gets hot, it gets hot under these lights. And there are times where I just don't wanna to have to monitor a candle. So I saw that they had some of the like reed diffusers on sale. So I picked up one from Homeworks. Let's go ahead and open this one together. I'm really excited. Uh, I have never, have I ever had a reed diffuser? I think I maybe had one 
in my lifetime. And I honestly do not even remember the fragrance that I got in this. I think it was something kind of wintry. Oh yeah, I remember now. I got By the Fireside. Now they actually had two fiery scents and I have a feeling that this one is supposed to like mimic uh, By the Fireplace by Replica. So it says that it has warm embers, mold spice, golden amber, and cedar wood. Yummy. Let's go ahead and pull this one out and we'll just go ahead and get it started. Okay, this is not me sitting here at my vanity praying that I don't splash diffuser oil everywhere because this has like a stopper in it that you have to get out. <laughs> and I'm like, Ooh. Okay, I did it. That was scary. Mm, I think I'm gonna like this. Even like fully, you know, concentrated. It wasn't like, ugh. I can definitely smell a little bit of the smokiness, a little bit of the amber, but it definitely has that like burning wood scent, but not so much that I'm going to wonder if something is on fire in the house. So I think this is actually really pretty too. I will see if they're still on the site because I cannot remember what I paid for this. I will look over my order and I'll let you know. Uh, but this is actually, I really like the bottle. I think it's pretty. Can you see if I put it in the light here? They've got the little emblem. Very chic. Oops, I didn't put the collar back on. Hot mess. Okay, yeah, that makes it a little bit more chic right there. So we'll go ahead and let this sit out somewhere on here. Okay. <laughs> so that was one thing that I got. And uh, when I was doing it, they must have been doing like a free gift with any fragrance purchase. This is the very sexy packaging that I got. I'm not kidding. And immediately when I opened it, I was like, uh oh. One of these must have leaked because something smells very, very rose-like in here. Very rose-like. Uh, <laughs> just, just what I always wished for. More fragrance samples. <laughs> I'm actually going to be excited to go through these because uh, in the Christmas ball that I did for my family, uh, one of the things was a set of perfume samples. And I know that there were a couple scents in there that my niece was like, oh, I think I really like that one. And I think it's in here. So I will probably give these out, but it's a lot of like your basic, the ones that we always all get. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Is there anything in here that I haven't tried before? Oh, I don't know that I've tried Idole now. Uh, I don't know if I've tried the Tiffany & Co. one either. Other than that, I think I've tried all of these. So I will probably pass these along to someone, but <laughs> I'm not sure which the one is that smells so rosy, but uh, I, will, I will go ahead and give these to someone who does not hoard fragrance like I do. All right, while we were on the non-cosmetic items, I actually had pulled this box out and I wanted to let you all know at the beginning of the video, but I thought we could unbox my monthly Abbott Lion gift. So Abbott Lion has offered to send me a piece every month as long as I share it with all of you and you all know, you all know that I absolutely love their jewelry. Oh, I actually have in my little square hoops. Can someone please tell me, what do we call a hoop that is square other than like misshapen? <laughs> but these are the ones that have the little etched stars on them. I saw that they actually have ones that you can um, customize and like engrave with whatever you'd like. I was really tempted to get those. But speaking of customization, I haven't opened this piece yet and I did actually customize this. So this is bespoke for me and I cannot wait to open it. So if you haven't seen Abbott Lion before, I got into their jewelry probably at this point a year and a half ago now maybe. And they are, you know, water resistant. I would say waterproof, honestly. I don't know if that's what they say, but I would say that they are. Uh, and they have some beautiful pieces. You can wear them at any time, you know, shower with them, sweat in them, whatever. They still look lovely. I have really had such good experiences with all of my Avent Lion pieces and the customer service. Actually, after my customer service experience is when I reached out to them about becoming an ambassador because I was like, I, this is just great. And I still continue to buy pieces from them. I actually have something that I'm gonna sort of show you in just a second from them. Sort of show you. Okay, so let's get into this piece. So if you haven't seen, it comes with a beautiful box. Oh, oh my gosh, this turned out honestly, like cuter than I, than I could have hoped. Okay. So I wanted to get a little name necklace 
and this is just adorable. I hope it will focus. So obviously it has my name on it. And then I did choose to put a charm on either side. So we have the little Virgo symbol and then a little star. I have been like all about the little stars recently. You know, I've got them on the earrings. I'll be able to wear it with this cute necklace. Oh my gosh, this is just so pretty. And I actually have, let me take this off. Uh, this, I don't know what they call it, uh, the dot chain, the ball chain. I actually have this chain. I think I actually have it in both the rose gold, which is what this is, in the rose gold and the gold. And the gold one I think is an initial necklace. So look at that, so cute. Oh my gosh, okay, we're putting it on right now. Okay, so, so happy with this. So if you can see here, I'll zoom you in just a little bit more. And there we go. Oh, look at it. Looks so cute. I'm so excited. Okay, so uh, I wasn't sure how I would feel about the dot chain with the charms. You know, I was like, is this just gonna look so silly having the charms and the dots, but I actually think it goes really nicely. I could also see just having it like without the dots and just getting a simple chain. They had so many options, like an overwhelming amount because it's like you got to pick your chain style. You could pick, you know, your little charms if you wanted to add charms. I am really in love with this. And I did decide to get the 18 inch. Usually I go for a 16 inch. I have a somewhat small neck and I just find that that really works well. But because this does have a bit of chain that you can, you know, kind of change the uh, length, I thought, well, I'll go with a longer one since most of what I have is shorter. And then this way I can layer with some of my other Abbott Lion chains. So I am so happy with this. Okay, so. I'm not actually gonna open this right now, but I wanted to know if you would like to see it in the future or maybe I'll do it on Instagram, but I did purchase, I sprung for the Abbott Lion advent calendar earlier <laughs> and I never opened it. And then I was like, oh, okay, I think I'm gonna do it for January, you know, have a little fun, sparkly something, something. And then um, completely didn't, completely forgot. It was sitting here by my vanity and I just, I just didn't, it was a complete fail. So now what I was thinking, you know, it says 12 days of Lux and now I might change this into my 12 days of love, like 12 days of love for me. So I might do a little unboxing uh, over on Instagram. And spoiler alert, I do know what's inside or at least I did at the time I purchased because there were some bespoke pieces you get to pick out. So, uh, the nice thing about not having <laughs> opened it is I have completely forgotten at least half of the pieces that are in here. So stay tuned for that or let me know your thoughts on seeing more of Abbott Lion in the future. <laughs> Thank you to the brand for letting me pick out this beautiful piece. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments and I will of course have my link down below so that you can check the brand out as well. So oh, I got sidetracked by the sparkly things and I just had to talk about these. So you know when you're doing an order and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm like a dollar away. I think I was actually like one cent <laughs> one time away from free shipping. Uh, that's usually when I pick up a pack of these because I really like these like tipped Q-tips for accurate cleanup, things like that. Uh, even like if I have like a little gunk in the inner corner of my eye, you know what happens. We don't wanna talk about it, but it does. Uh, I can use these for that and I really like these. So I picked up another pack of these I probably already have an extra pack, but I do use them quite a bit. So this was the other thing in that really exciting Ulta order. It's just the thing. All right, if you haven't seen this pretty little palette, again, like I said, I got this in my Beautylish Lucky Bag. And right away, I was I was excited to have been lucky enough to get you know a new palette because I know that a lot of the palettes that were sent out were ones that have maybe been around for a little bit, but I'm not usually one to go into the, you know, more purpley side of life all that often. However, I have been starting to do that more. And so this little pretty color story is gonna be what we're working with today. She's pretty, she is quite pretty. And honestly, I don't have anything that's exactly like this in my collection. You know, you have something that's almost in that sort of like taupey silver range, a more neutralized taupe, I would say. We have a purple that has a bit of pop, which I will appreciate at some point. You also have like a little bit of 
a cool toned brown in here. I really honestly didn't even look at this super closely. A beautiful plum. We're definitely gonna have fun with this. And of course, the Vizier Art mats are just so beautiful and blendable. The shimmers for me, you know, they're like a soft shimmer. They're beautiful, but they're not quite like shimmer with capital S, but that is a-okay, especially for Lisa Eldridge sweatshirt day, you know? Like I don't, I don't need to have a bunch of pop. We're just going soft. This is just gonna be, you know, Monday night movie night makeup. All right, when I applied my concealer earlier, I did put a very light amount on my lids and just dusted some translucent setting powder over, which is the way that I do my makeup most days. I didn't wanna put a primer on just so that I could really give you my thoughts on this palette, uh, being someone who doesn't usually put on a primer. Obviously that will totally help all of the things. It'll help the color saturation, it'll help the longevity and all of those things, but I really like to see how something lives on the eye just on its own. So I think what I'm gonna do, we might as well just like lean into this purple situation, right? Now that being said, I do wanna start out and sort of like map out my shape. So I'm probably gonna take some of these lighter shades and I'm just gonna sort of create the shape, like I said, of the eye look. Uh, that way it won't get too out of control as we get into the deeper purples. So I'm using the shade Mauve de Bois and just gonna run that through my entire crease and just kind of like feather that up once most of that shadow is off of the brush. Oh, by the way, I'm using the 202 from BK Beauty. And I almost always do, you know, a more like winged out shape. I don't want it to be too round, uh, just because I find that that's not flattering for my eye shape, my face shape, but I'm going to try not to wing it out too much. Let's keep this just a little bit more rounded, more oval, let's go for. So when I get to the outer corner, I really try to like check myself. <laughs> because I find that sometimes when we blend, we can start to like blend out too much and then it's like tipping down. And especially for me having slightly downturned eyes, that's a big no-no. On most people, unless you have like really upturned eyes, you don't wanna do that. You wanna keep, you know, kind of in that uh, sort of like line with your nostril and the corner of your eye and up. You really don't wanna go out too much past that. I mean, that's just like general, uh, most flattering for your face shape. There are always exceptions to the rule, of course, and you know, do whatever the hell you want, but <laughs> that's just that's just general rules, like I said. Okay, so once I get this on, again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do anything too involved here today. Uh, let's see. Why don't we take the shade that's next to it, Brunel? That's just a little bit deeper. Uh, you know what? Nah, let's let's go a little bit more purple. Let's take this bottom one here. This one is Cendre Lila. Okay, I first wanted to say Cendres Lilas, but that to me sounds more Spanish than French. So I'm gonna go with Cendre Lila. Okay, this is like, it's been a little while. <laughs> it's been a little while since I've had to pull out my French. Um, usually my pronunciation is pretty good, but I am unsure. Okay, so I'm gonna take that with the BKA504, and I'm gonna put that in the outer corner, and then that's gonna be what I run under the lash line too. And even though I mostly just want this in the outer corner, I do sort of give it like a little whisk into the crease, just so it doesn't have like a hard edge. I remember, uh, I remember when I was first, you know, looking into like eyeshadow application. I mean, and I was probably in middle school, maybe, you know, they talked about like the outer V and you would like draw a little V. And I think, you know, that that's what I did. I just did like a V. I didn't actually like spread it out and blend it. So yes, am I using it in the outer V? Do I want it to be just a V? <laughs> Obviously no, but you know, when you think back, it's like, oh yeah, I remember like, whatever it was, probably Cosmo. Oh, I, was, I would have been too young to read Cosmo, but I don't know, whatever the teen magazines were, I did get those, you know, and you'd like cut out your like favorite crush out of it and tape it to your wall. And your parents would get mad at you because the tape wasn't good for the paint. <laughs> I think the 504 is still gonna be an okay option for running this under the lash line. I'm just actually gonna do like the outer third. And then I'm just taking on a microfiber cloth, just sort of like dusting that brush off. And then we're gonna go back into that first shade. We use Mauve de Bois, and we'll just run this under the inner third. And then honestly, like use it to sort of blur the edge as well towards the outside. 
I like that these purples are more earthy. Like really the only true like rainbow purple, if you will, is this one here. And then this plum even, even though it's got a little bit more saturation of purple, it still has a bit of like a gray smoke to it, like an earthy feel to it. So definitely, I'm definitely glad that I kept this. I can already see that. Okay, so we're gonna go into Belle de Nuit and I am actually going to use the brush that I got in my Beautylish Lucky Bag, the Builder Medium from Sonia G. And I am gonna wet my brush. So I'm just going to wiggle that into the pan first and then we'll take some Fix Plus. All right, I'm just going to tap this all over the lid Ooh, this is a pretty shade. So I am working it mostly into the lid and then when I feel like most of what's on the brush is gone and I really need to like work that into the lash line. It is like my pet peeve when I see on myself or whatever, uh, that little like micro skip between the lash line and the lid space, you know, where it's like, it almost looks like flesh toned eyeliner. So I really like to work the bristles in at the lash line. And you know, that's when it's nice to be using a brush like Sonia G's beautiful brushes where you can really like wiggle in at an area that tends to be more delicate skin without like irritating your eyes. Okay, so then once that's mostly clean, I'm just taking the edge of those bristles and coming through and just blending that edge. Oh, as I'm like looking at <laughs> my eyes, I have this issue and I think it's from using my lash serum. I mean, it's an okay issue to have. I'm, I'm not too mad about it, but I start to grow those little longer hairs on my very inner corner. Uh, eyelash hairs, by the way. I mean, that was probably understood, but I figured I should probably clarify. But anyway, I get those little eyelash hairs on my inner corner and I don't want that because that looks really weird when you add shimmers. So then I have to go and I have to tweeze out those hairs. Does that happen to anybody else? Like they're, it's like self torture. <laughs> it happens. Let me know, does it happen to you? Do you, do you tweeze your inner corners? Ridiculous. But I am actually gonna go back through and just blur this edge where the shimmer and the matte meet. I don't really have any product on this brush. I'm just kind of smearing the two together. Okay, this is pretty. I am not gonna lie. This is super pretty. So now, I, I was kind of thinking we could use this like pewtery shade, but it is gonna be too much for the inner corner. Although I can probably just like Tap a little of this. We'll just do a little like layering. Oh my gosh, you guys know I'm not, I'm not usually a fingers girl. Okay, cute. Got a little halo eye moment. So I'm just gonna take that worker brush and just kind of tap at the edges to diffuse that. So it doesn't look like I just stuck my finger on my eyeball. Just to get a little bit of softness. Gonna have to change my earrings. Gold earrings, silver eye makeup. I'm not here for it. I'll probably just change it out into one of my rose gold pieces from Abbott Lion, but that's really pretty. All right, I am quickly going to go and put on some mascara. I am probably just gonna skip. I'm probably just gonna skip an inner corner, honestly. I am very excited to put on that lipstick. So I will be right back and we can do that together. All right, here we have the final look with mascara from the Visi Art Violette Vespertine. This is of course, uh, let's see, one of the Entendu palettes, yes. So for this being my first look with this palette, I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely loving it. Not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm back. I can't say I'm not a purple person anymore. Clearly. Okay, so I did just wanna mention, uh, I used this Bare Minerals Lashtopia Mega Volume Mineral Based Mascara. This must have been a freebie in something at some point. Uh, I just know that it's been in my mascara drawer for a hot minute, uh, unopened, but in there for a hot minute. So I was like, eh, I should use this. They say that it's one of their best sellers. I was just looking it up to even see if it was still made anymore. <laughs> not gonna lie. So. I'm not in love with this, but I also don't hate it. It's sort of one of those like, okay, this is nice. I will say it's a nice fluffy formula. And what is it, around 20 bucks? Yeah, $20, which I think is actually pretty average for a mascara. So 
you know, I'm still on the hunt. I'm still on the hunt for something that is going to be just as good as my Bite Beauty Upswing. This ain't it, but I don't hate it. So, all right, uh, let's go ahead and put on that lipstick. I might as well just leave you zoomed in. We're gonna go ahead and try on the Surratt Lip Slick in Eau Courante. And I think that this is going to be the perfect shade for this. So the brand describes this as sort of a like satin lipstick and lip gloss hybrid, very much here for it. I am going to do this as just a very thin wash just because we have so much color on the eyes and that depth. I, I don't really want this to get super vampy. It absolutely could. You could and it's probably gonna look great, but that's just probably not my vibe for today. But we'll see what happens once I put this on. Okay, I do have a little bit of my City Lips uh, Clear Gloss Down. I'm probably just gonna leave this. I just honestly use it like a lip mask. So we're just gonna go right over the top. Stop, stop. Of course, I was just chastising myself for talking as I'm trying to apply a fairly dark color and then the camera went off, so. Yeah, this is pretty. It's cool toned, but not like overly purple. Mm -hmm. I am here for it. Good, comfortable texture. Okay, this is probably, it's great. It's great for wintertime, like vampy vibes. I will probably like it as it wears off just a little bit, but man, does this feel comfortable. I'll be curious to see how it does in the lip line because I definitely went right out to the edge of my lip line. So hopefully it doesn't bleed too much, but honestly, the tackiness of the city lips is probably gonna do it some favors and kind of like keep it because this is not tacky at all. I don't wanna say that the city lips is tacky. It's just viscous. It has like a thickness to it. Whereas this definitely, oh, actually it does have a little bit of like, again, not tacky, just like thick, like, that's so interesting. It's like a, it shears out, the formula shears out, but the product feels thicker. This is really, really nice. Okay, very impressed with this so far. I, I don't really need to be buying any lip products right now, but I could absolutely see at some point getting a couple of these in lighter shades. Like this formula isn't necessarily, we'll see how it moves on the lips or doesn't move on the lips, but this formula isn't necessarily what I would normally reach for for a dark color like this, but maybe that's gonna keep it a little on the fresh feel of it, you know, rather than like a more like opaque, sits down, doesn't move anywhere type of lipstick. So hmm, I might have to look into the other colors of this product. All right, so that's it, y'all. That is our makeup journey together today for this makeup play date. Liking the blush so far, you know, we've, we've only been sitting here for 30 minutes or so, so it's not like we really have that much wear time. But of course, like I said, I will absolutely be leaving you a pinned comment with thoughts on how this wore. Okay, so I'm <laughs> just I'm just clipping this in really quick because I sat down, I just went and grabbed a snack before I start filming again. And I was like, oh, something is smelling good. I completely, I completely forgot about this, but I'm already smelling this. It is definitely, it definitely gives a little bit of that by the fireplace vibes, but it's not quite as smoky. And I think that that's a good thing. I don't, it's sweet. It's spicy, but it does have a little bit of that like burning wood vibe. I'm really liking this. I will have to see how this lasts, but let me know if you've tried any of the Homeworks products. This is my first time trying anything from them. So, so far so good. Definitely gonna be a good one for winter. I just, <laughs> I just had to include that. Really love the eye look. Very excited to have this palette. You know, this is one thing about mystery bags or mystery boxes that is really fun. This palette is not something that I ever would have picked up on my own, not honestly, not even in a sale, just because it, it's just not the color story that I'm normally drawn to, but wow, she's cute. And I really love the way that this turned out. So I'm very happy with that. Um, yeah, and this lipstick, let me tell you. So I will be very curious to see what's going on with Flower Beauty. If anybody knows, if anybody has the tea, go ahead and spill it down in the comments. All right, lovelies, I really appreciate all of you taking some time out of your day to spend it with me and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on future videos. Like I always say, but I do have some fun content coming down the pipe very soon. Well, I hope you thought this was fun today. I hope you enjoyed getting to hang out with me, hearing my thoughts. If you have thoughts on any of these items, I would love to know down below and I will see you really soon.